Welcome to CG Dive. This is another video in the mockup and retargeting series. If you want to start from the beginning, check out the playlist. I'll link to it in the description. And you can get early access to these videos when you support CG Dive on Patreon or Gumroad. All links are below. Let's take a quick look at the general process of importing motion capture data as FBX or BVH. I'll start with FBX. In Blender, just go to File, Import, FBX and go to the folder where you have your FBX files. And now in many cases, the default settings, which I have here, will work fine. So here's an example with this MMA kick. If I just import it, I have my armature and the motion looks okay. And there are a few problems here with the transforms and the size of the armature, which I'll talk about in a second. But now I want to highlight one of the most common problems that you'll encounter when importing skeletal animation from an FBX file. So I'll delete the skeleton and again I'll import an FBX and now I'll choose my second example and again with the default settings I'll click import and this is what our armature looks like. If I play the action you'll see that it works and you can probably even kind of guess what kind of action it is but the bones are obviously not aligned properly. So I'll delete this, import again I'll select the same file and now under armature I'm going to enable automatic bone orientation and import again. And now we have an armature that is much easier to read. It looks like a normal blender armature. And if we play the action we can read the movement very very easily. So for FBX import this is the most important setting that you should keep in mind. And now if we look at the transforms of this armature that we got in object mode, you'll see that it has unapplied rotation and scale. And having unapplied rotation is really bad. It, it can lead to problems when you try to retarget, depending on the add-on that you're using. The cool thing is that applying the rotation of the armature is not a problem. So if I press Ctrl A and choose rotation, the rotation will be zeroed out and if I play the action you'll see that it plays perfectly, there are no problems. And what about the scale? If you apply the scale, Control A, scale, then something very weird will happen. You'll see that the character movement has been offset quite a bit and instead of the subtle movements that we had originally, the, the character is flying around. That is because when we apply the scale, Blender didn't fix the size of the action accordingly. There is a way to fix this manually um, in our add-on, Game Rig Tools. We're going to have an, a tool for that. It will apply the scale of the object and fix the size of the action with one click. Uh, we're going to release this soon. But here's the thing, um, these scale values actually don't matter for retargeting. Having unapplied scale will generally not cause problems in our retargeting workflow. So I'm simply going to undo. And I'm going to leave the scale of this armature unapplied and I'll have proper motion. When importing FBX files, there is a special case of incorrect bone orientation where automatic bone orientation doesn't really solve the problem. Here I have this mockup data from Octocore and the skeleton that they provide is unusually complex. So I'm going to select one of them and use automatic bone orientation and import. And you'll see that even though we used automatic bone orientation, there are these bones that point to the side of the arm. And if I go to pose mode, this is actually the lower arm. So automatic bone orientation didn't quite solve the problem here. And there is something that you can do about it. I'm going to delete this armature and import again. And now instead of automatic, I'm going to set my bone primary and secondary axis manually. And for this skeleton from Octacore, I know that primary Y and secondary Z works well. Import FBX and you'll see that all bones seem to be aligned well. There are no bones sticking to the side. And these are the main things that you should keep in mind when importing FBX files. Now let's look at importing BVH files. 
I'll go to File, Import, PVH. And I'll import this um, PVH file that I have prepared with the default settings. And so a common problem with PVH files is that when they're imported, they are huge. But again, scaling the mockup skeleton down in object mode is not a problem. So simply scale it until you get some sort of average human height for this um, skeleton. And that will be fine. Rotation here is applied. If it is unapplied, you can apply it easily with Control A rotation. And that is more or less it for importing BVH files. They tend to be simpler to import. There are a bunch of more options that you can try. For example, if you know the scale that you want in advance, you can set it up over here. So for this skeleton, uh, I saw that I need a scale of about 0.14. And now if I import the BVH file, it will be imported with the correct size from the start. And the scale is actually applied. So if you care about applied scale, use the scale setting in the BVH import dialog. Now that we can import motion capture data into Blender, let's make sure that it also makes sense. The standard mockup armature that you'll find in general has a simple humanoid structure. It will generally have a hip bone, which is also the root of the whole armature. There are spine bones, usually around three. There can be four or two or even just one single spine bone. Usually there will be one neck bone and one head bone, shoulder bones, for the arms, you'll generally have upper arm, lower arm, and hand, and sometimes also fingers, which may or may not be animated. The leg will generally consist of upper leg, lower leg, foot, and toe bone, which represents the ball of the foot, and there may be individual toe bones. And these are the bones that you'll actually need, but sometimes for various reasons, you'll also get additional bones that you don't really want, but they kind of get imported. These can be random, unnecessary bones at the end of bone chains. I think these are so-called leaf bones and Blender has a special setting in the FBX import options to remove leaf bones, but unfortunately that can also remove necessary bones, so do not use it. You may also get additional bones in the form of twist bones and other functionality bones. That is relatively rare, but we just saw an example of that in the Octacore skeleton. And another problem that you may face with your imported mockup data is that a specific bone exists, but its size is off, so it is difficult to see or its function is difficult to recognize. So let's look at some actual examples. Here I have an armature from Miximo. And Miximo armatures in general import very cleanly, they are very easy to read. So here we have the hips that I talked about, spine bones, neck bone, head bone, shoulder, arm, legs. So let's just look at the stuff that can confuse you. For example, there's this head top end bone, which you'll generally not want to use in your retargeting. There is another similar one at the toe. It is called toe end. And when you get comfortable with your skeletons, then you can even go to edit mode and delete these bones. If you really don't need them, then that wouldn't affect your workflow. I won't delete them here. And something else that is a little bit weird is the size of these hands. For some reason, they are pretty big. So you can go to edit mode, select them, switch to individual origins and scale them down. And that will not affect the animation in any way. The size of the bones in edit mode can be edited relatively safely, especially this kind of bones at the end of the chains. Next, let's just jump off the deep end and we'll look at mockup data from Octacore. And again, I'm going to import it just as I showed you a little bit earlier as FBX. And I'm going to set my secondary axis to Z and import. Okay, so the Octacore skeleton has a lot of bones, much more than you'll find in your average mockup data. Let's go to pose mode and try to explore it. So this is a special bone that moves the pelvis. It is not the hips, even though it looks like it. The hips is in here. If I go to wireframe view, this is the actual hips. Here we have a waist uh, bone, which we can consider like a spine bone, another spine bone, and another spine bone. 
then we have two neck bones, and then we should have a head bone, but it is nowhere to be seen. So here if I box select in this area and then control click to deselect these bones, you'll see that I still have a bone selected. And let's go to edit mode and start scaling this bone up. Okay, now I can properly select it and that is actually the head bone. So I'm going to scale it up a little bit until it looks good and now I have my head bone properly visible. Okay, the legs have twist bones. So here I have selected the twist bone. If I click again in the same area, I'll have the actual thigh bone. So to clean this up, I'm going to grab the twist bone and the one below it and move it to layer two. In the lower leg, there are a bunch of bones, a twist, some sort of knee bone and the actual calf bone. And that is the one I need. So I'm going to select the other ones and move them to layer two. And we can keep going like this. And when we actually strip away all of the additional bones, we'll be left with a skeleton that pretty much has the standard structure that I showed you earlier. And we are working on a new add-on called Retarget Helper, which won't be an actual retargeting solution. It will just contain little scripts that will make your retargeting life easier. And we made a script that cleans up this uh, octacore skeleton automatically. So I'm going to move these bones back to layer one, go to layer one, go to object mode, and then from the add-on, I'll do act core cleanup, just press okay. And that will leave me with the very basic bones on layer zero. If I go to layer one, I have my hands. So if I want to use them, I can bring them back to layer zero. Then we have the toes, then the facial bones, then the twist bones, additional bones, and the root bone that this armature has. And if I undo and click Actacore Cleanup again, you'll see that we have options as to where to put these bones. So for example, if I need my finger bones, I can keep them on layer zero, and then just define which group of bones will go on which layer. And the script also rescales some of the bones. As you saw by default, the upper arm bone is really short like half the length that it should be. But if you use the add-on, it will just automatically rescale these bones so that they make sense. So the Actacore skeleton is really complex and trying to make sense of it can be a good exercise. Let's also look at other examples and let's see if we can find something interesting. Here I have a skeleton from Deep Motion. And it has a very clean structure. One thing that could confuse you is the orientation of the foot. It kind of extends at a 90 degree angle from the shin. This is how it looks in edit mode. And I think it's more common to see the foot like this at an angle. But this will not create any problems in your retargeting workflow, so you don't need to worry about it. Here is another example a skeleton from Free Game Arts, which came as an BVH file. And again, it has a clear structure. However, it is interesting that the spine is just a single bone. That would give us less data to work with when we retarget, but it won't be a problem. And this skeleton also doesn't have any toes. Again, toes would provide more data to work with, but we could say that they're not essential. Here I have a skeleton from Motec Entertainment. And if I go to pose mode, you'll see that the hips is oriented a little bit differently than other skeletons. Again, you don't have to worry about it. There are four spine bones. Three or four spine bones is quite common, so I think that's fine. Then again, we have this head and bone that you'll probably not use in your retargeting. Then the actual foot bone is this bone. I'm not sure if it is supposed to be oriented like this or it probably didn't import correctly into Blender. It should really look something like this. Then we have the actual toe, then the toe end bone and two additional vis bones. And I honestly don't know what their purpose is. Here is a skeleton from, from Rococo. Again, a clean structure. It has the top bone as well. 
It has the straight feet and the toe tips. Here is another armchair again from Rococo. And this one has some sort of prop ball. So, so depending on where you got the action from and what its original purpose was, there can be some crazy bones in the skeleton, but it's important to keep in mind the standard structure and focus on it and ignore the other additional bones. And finally, let's see how you can create your own libraries of mockup data, so to speak. I'm looking forward to the asset manager in Blender 3, where maybe we'll be able to organize actions as assets, but we'll have to wait and see. But here is an approach that I have for right now. I'm going to import FBX. And here I have a bunch of animations that I have from Miximo. And because they're from Miximo, they kind of have the same skeleton. Uh, some Miximo animations actually have a slightly different skeleton or the bones are named a little bit differently. But here I made sure that I got the same skeleton by importing my own model, rigging it with the Miximo tools and then exporting animations from this model. And now if I just select all of these animations by pressing A in here and click import FBX. I'll also enable automatic bone orientation, import FBX. So each action was imported with its own armature. But because these armatures are structurally identical inside, I only need one of them. So I'll select the first armature, press control I to select all other armatures and delete them. And now even though I deleted them, all actions are still here. I can go to the outliner and switch this to Blender file. And here you'll see all of the actions that I imported. And now if I switch this area to Dope Sheet Action Editor, I can switch between my actions. And so this armature can play all of the actions that I imported. Okay. I'm going to split another window here and make it a nonlinear animation editor. And now I'm going to go through these actions and stash them into the NLA. Stashing simply puts the active action into the NLA and disables and locks the track. And this way I'm storing this action inside this armature and I can store more than one. So I can keep going. Next action, stash. Next action, stash. Next one, stash. Stash, stash, stash. Now, if I want to preview any of these actions, I can start it and it will be playable. Okay, now I can save this file. And now if I'm in a new file where I want to import my Miximo actions, I can go to File, Append, find the Miximo actions that I saved. And now if I go to Object and import my armature object, the armature will be imported. And in the NLA, all of these actions are there, so they will also be imported into the scene. I hope this has been useful. Join me next time when we'll actually start retargeting. We'll start with the Rococo add-on, but I'll also cover Autorig Pro, Renim and others. Big thanks to my supporters. Join them to get early access to my stuff and other perks. Please click like, subscribe and tune in next time. Bye-bye.